becoming a patron right now so he can join the call. Oh, yeah. let's let's add him. <laughs> He's saying this could be our chance to get Armin drunk. <laughs> Wait, let me add him right now then. Hold on. Vince. Oh. All right, so I'm going to add Vince. Vince is our new patron on Atheist Republic. Okay, so yeah. Because... His last name is Freeman, right? Freeman? Yes. Vince. I should remind me to thank him for being a patron because I'm suck at thanking people. I suck at like social stuff, birthday stuff. Like people have to keep telling me to. Uh, by the way, uh, thank you for reminding me for that. To remember, uh, Mars, was it you? You messaged me about his. About what? Who? Somebody reminded me to wish uh, to post happy birthday and our. Uh, I have no I don't know what I'm talking about. Was that all Lee? No, I think that was whose birthday was it recently? And sick of the Jardis? Oh, it was Mars. Mars's birthday. So it was the other way around. Vincent reminded me to happy wish happy birthday for Mars. Oh, so I see now I don't even remember what who whose birthday it was. See, I suck at this stuff. <laughs> it's okay. Thank you. He yeah. says that he's gonna join in a second. He's eating right now. Okay, okay, but but you should you should Vince was very like he's so sweet because he was like it would mean so much to Mars if you post this in the group. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, like okay, I'll and do it. it. I'll do it. Did. So yeah, Vince, and it did. <laughs> no, but the, he, but he's such a good friend. You guys are so yeah, yeah. He's a good guy. Oh. We we actually met outside. Um, you know when Sam Harris started his book club and like um, Vince, myself, and a few other guys we met outside that event where he put his book. Um, Your idea is shit, by the way. Shit. I have no idea what you're saying. Do you have headphones? Aren't you like a aren't you like a tech guy? Like why are you're supposed to? It's software, not hardware for me. How how old are you? It must be a boomer thing. No, I'm forty. <laughs> <laughs> Mars feels like he's eighteen. Okay, he's eighteen on the inside. Okay, give him some slack now. <laughs> Well, because he's Asian, that's they don't look any different until they hit fifty. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> you cannot t- with Asian people. You cannot tell. Are you eighteen or forty? I can't tell. And then they hit fifty, and like, oh, okay, now I can tell. Was that a micro? <laughs> <laughs> No, oh my god, in my multicultural psychology class, we like talked about like, yeah, positive stereotypes and like the danger of positive stereotypes and like, yeah, all that stuff. Wait, this is unrelated, but like, how old do I look? Like, just based on appearance. 12. (laughs) (laughs) 12. I'm not even joking. I don't know why you guys like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I need feedback because it's hard for me to tell. It's genuinely hard for me to tell. I was looking at pictures of my high school graduation and I look the same, except I just don't have really bad like bangs anymore. <laughs> right. Well, I answered. You guys answer. Oh, yeah. Uh, You're in your 30s, aren't you? Yeah. I'm 36. 36. Okay. So not that much younger than myself. Um, wow, turning 40 was a ticket. Mike, can't you guys see my hair is turning white? Look. Does it show? That's nothing. I can see. Oh, yeah, really. On camera, you can't see it. Mm. On camera, you don't see it. It depends on the lighting. Because I remember you did, I think, a live stream off of your phone or something in the lighting in your bedroom. You mm. could see it a lot more. Oh, okay. um, yeah. But just like work it. Should, just I, gotta co- be the same should I color it? No, or no? My, my wife no, was no. trying to color no. 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 no, you just gotta go full Magic Noir's Silver Fox. Silver Fox. <laughs> <laughs> I would like it if if the t- if the front w- turned white and the rest remained black. That would be cool. <laughs> would be like, that would be cool. Yeah. So I'm hoping hey, Jack, for that. What? Jack, you were in a um, you were in um, in, in, a, in a live stream of Secular Jihadist about a year. That's like yeah, it was probably about a year and a half ago, wasn't it? We talked about the trans, some of the problems in, in the transgender community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. 
we should have Jack on Secular Jaws. Would you be interested in that, Jack? Um, sure. Yeah. If it's relevant. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I have to learn more. <laughs> that was a great podcast, dude. Yeah, that was pretty interesting. A lot of people liked it. I think you changed a lot of people's opinion. On, um, you know, I think I find it that right wing people keep changing their minds on trans issues when trans issues people start talk, calling out like woke yeah. stuff. A yeah, lot of, yeah. a lot, it confuses a lot of them, and people are like, Indeed. maybe I, <laughs> yeah, it like, confuses. Yeah, maybe, maybe I agree with them, like, and way more than I think. And then, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a bit, yeah. Just, I we, we, we all have problems, but some people on the left, like, they just take it too far, and it yeah. doesn't help anyone really. Yeah. For or, for myself and for the audience, what was this previous conversation? Oh, so like, I don't know that, what you guys are talking about. Go, you go ahead, Jack. It was it was more about like how like a lot of people in the left are actually causing a lot of damage within the transgender community, and just like a lot of it's just like taking things too far and like the too woke type culture type thing and stuff like we should be asking everyone their gender and just be like whoa whoa let's oh you're let's telling me a little bit just a little bit you know it's like that's because I know a lot of I love a lot a lot of non-binary people too and, uh, just got to right. be a little bit. A little bit calmer, like one of one of my uh, fr- and I I did I did it I made the mistake, but I didn't realize that it was uh, non-binary. Um, but I, I just did it there. He, I didn't realize they were non-binary at first until I saw another post. And it's like, oh crap! I didn't realize they were like, oh no, it's all good. It was like I'll just make a conscious effort to not mess it up. And it was like, well, like even if you do, it's not right. the end of the world. Just I, I know that you're trying. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, that's that's the attitude everyone needs, rather than this stuff. You know, oh, if you get it wrong, you're bad. Like, oh yeah, God. so I think both sides are getting it wrong. Like some people say, like the one side is making it seem like if I get it wrong, like if I if I assume something, and it was wrong, it's the end of the goddamn world. You could just be like, yeah. no, this is not right. This is the right thing. I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna be like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. I'm gonna be like. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Okay, what's your, what's the right word? Oh, that's it. Okay, there. It fixed. Oh, uh, everything, everything solved. No problem. I made a wrong assumption. You corrected me. Everything is okay now. Okay. Yeah, but the yeah. other side, but the other side is also extreme. They want to be a dick about it. They're like, you corrected me. I refuse to use those words that you want me to use because fuck you, right? Like, no, yeah. you're, you're both being assholes. The side that is just refusing to be nice is being asshole. The side that is making it seem like you just committed a genocide because you use the use the wrong pronoun is also being an asshole. Oh yeah, I, I got a buddy of mine who's transgender, and like um, he's he's of the he's of that viewpoint. It's like you know you, you can't make anyone call you um uh, uh, these these like these pronouns. I mean, if you, you want to state your preference and you want to call and um the person. On the end of the uh, on the on that end of the admonishment, you know, just call them whatever they want out of human being. You know, that's that's cool. But yeah, but if you want to if you want to like make some law in place so you can get and make someone call, you know, like, right? Call someone or whatever. Then, then no, fuck you. Yeah. 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 I mean, I'm 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 in favor of not randomly swearing at people, for example. Okay. Like if going out and tell, seeing a random person and telling them in their face "fuck you," I'm against that. I'm, am I not? Am I for making a law against that? No, there shouldn't be any laws that says that you should not be swearing at people. Okay, that's a stupid law, right? But I, th- I think it's just one of those things. It's like um, it goes back to the, everyone starts crying about like freedom of speech. Just like you know, it, it, I, I often like refer to like my work. I work in visual effects, so I work on movies and TV. So I have to sign a document saying I'm not going to talk about these things outside of work unless I have permission, all that kind of stuff. I still 100% have freedom of speech. I don't have to follow that rule. Like the police aren't going to lock me up if I start talking about a show that I've signed a document saying I won't talk about. Will I ever work again? No, but I still have freedom of speech. (laughs) So yeah. like if I'm if my work is affected by me saying something, it's like that's not impinging on my freedom of speech. Yeah. If someone was to come and lock me up, 
yes, now my freedom of speech is, is affected. So it's like people just don't understand what freedom of speech means. And they think they should be able to say whatever they want without it affecting their work. Like, no, right. that's not what it means, people. So, yeah. Right. Michael Shermer just, opened, just, just, had, just released a new book on that, Giving the Devil His Due. Uh, yeah, and he, he's pretty much just dissecting um, just about all the arguments about free speech. Like, um, you know, I'm only, I'm only a, a short, um, um, a little bit into it, but it's, you know, it's pretty good so far. I mean, one of the best books I've ever read on the subject. Is, um, are you guys all familiar with Fire? Wait, what? Oh, the, oh, the, 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 the no, 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 no. <laughs> Fire Festival is also good. No, this is a um, campus free speech like watch group. Oh, it stands right. for something that's an acronym. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, Vince is trying to join the call. Have you added him to the group? I did. He did. I'm going to add okay. him again. I'm going to add him again. Vince. Uh, All is live. Add. I just added him again. Yeah. He's getting a call right now. Yay, friends. <laughs> oh, oh did he join? Hey, hey how's everyone doing? Hello. <laughs> Okay. Anyhow, like Good. what I was saying before, like Fire um, released this book called *The Guide to Free Speech*. It, it, it's most it mostly deals with how to handle free speech issues on on college campuses. But what what I really liked about it was like they break it down. Yeah, exactly. That's the book. Um, it, they wait. They, Vince, hold that up again. Hold that up again. They released this on campus. That book is awesome. They um it, it breaks down like um several of the um the, the court cases that made it up over the last couple of years, over the over the past about the the precedence of a free speech that was that, that really flushed out why we should have it why we should defend it and why it's a it's a very very important right to hold and like you know what are the limitations right and it makes it in like all in really, really good detail so i recommend that book all the time um to everyone right yeah it's it, another example is when we ban people like on uh, in a Facebook group, like Atheist Republic, not the uh, Facebook group, people are like, oh, I thought you guys said for free speech. Or like, do do we call the, the police show up to arrest you because of what you said on Facebook? Like, what? Then your yeah. free speech hasn't been violated. Yeah. yeah. But Susanna, you went to get something, but you then came back and you didn't show up. Oh, man. I can't find it. I'll find it for our next discussion. But I was okay. going to show you guys the pronoun pin that I used when I was using he, him pronouns. Right. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. You, very oh, funny. Oh, wow. Inter you use you, yeah. he, what, he, him? Mm hmm Okay. And what do you use now? Like, she, hers. I, I don't give a fuck. Like, <laughs> a lot of <laughs> my yeah, friends... Yeah, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> a lot of my friends still yeah. use, like, gender-neutral pronouns for me. Mm. I'm like, uh, they're kind of just, like, making that assumption. But I'm like, okay, whatever. Like, I really don't care. Um, I know, I know who you're referring to. You're referring to me. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Do you think it's offensive to tell people that you know what? I'll call you whatever you want. I'll call you a circle if you want me to call you. Like I don't know, like I, is that offensive to tell people? Like just tell me what to, what you want to be called, and I'll call you that. Is that like a lot of trans people? I think for, like, some people find it offensive to be like, you know what? That's you know, Apache helicopter jokes, that doesn't make any sense. Stop making that joke. Do you think that's okay? <laughs> yeah, I, I think that joke is just tired and just, it's just, I think it's one of those things, like, just as someone who is into comedy, I see that and just be like, oh, try something new. Like, new, if you're going right. to yeah. do that, a circle. Try circle. something it's, new. It's, yeah. A circle. <laughs> it's just like, it's just tired at this point. It's like, you're not even trying. Like, if you want to be offensive... Just no, but try. is it if it <laughs> is it offensive because I might if you actually mean it like that one the Apache helicopter one is a joke like like the, how ridiculous it is. But what if you say I actually I actually mean it? Just tell me whatever you want to be called. I'll just call you that. Like because some that people are mutually fine with that in my experience. Right. But I mean, I live in a very specific area with a very specific culture, so what flies here would probably be different other places. I think um, more about just like you know i don't i think it's stupid mm. i don't really care about it but at the same time it's like i kind of want to just be like you know I, I, it's the same with things like the whole transracial thing it's just like doesn't make sense as a word like it's not transracial it's because there is no opposite 
like mm. trans means like an opposing side, right? So transracial is like, what the fuck? Like <laughs> there's no opposite, right? right. But when I, I just like kind of like to keep things like if it's to do with something to do with transgender, it's just like it's to do with gender. So when you start bringing in like an Apache helicopter, it's like that's a thing. That's an object. Right. Like if we're talking about no, gender, it, let's keep it to, to something that is like gender terms, like you know. Right. So it's, but what? But if you. But but I'm just saying, like, if you, whatever makes you comfortable, I'll go with that. That's what I mean. Is, yeah. You know, yeah. Whatever makes you comfortable. And and I'm against people who say like, oh, if you want me to call you day there, that's just bad grammar. I'm against. I I don't think it's bad grammar because grammar cha- grammar changes. But it doesn't even change. Like right. if, if you if you even look at that one, like if I, I've done it before to someone who was who was complaining about it, and I, I literally just changed and said there all the time instead of like mm-hmm. his or her. And they didn't even notice. It was like that's their jacket. You know, it, it, people don't ever question that, right? That's just normal. It's like you don't know if it's who the jacket belongs to. You're more but likely even, to say that's But even jacket. if it was bad grammar. Like the grammar today is different from the grammar back in Shakespearean time, wasn't it? Like, hasn't it changed? Yeah. So yeah. I'm, okay, I'm okay with changing grammar if it makes people comfortable. I mean, we had like many languages, like Persian doesn't have gender pronouns. It's all the same. So having gender neutral pronouns is not like such a stretch. that like, oh my God, why do we have to change everything for people to be comfortable? Well, so that they're comfortable. What's wrong with making people comfortable? I mean, it's not a big deal. I'm okay with, I support things that make people feel more like them. What's, that's not a, that's not that big of a cost. All right, I don't know. I Dennis Barron wrote a, an interesting book about that, about how we sort of started shifting away from using just him when we're referring to women as well. Like in the constitution, it says him. Um, and it's just sort of implied that it must also refer women. But then people started arguing for wanting a gender neutral pronoun because people were using the fact that in the Constitution it only said him to try to deny women their rights and say it never referred to women. And so um, they when people started uh, using they and them or their originally, that was one of the main arguments that it's not grammatically correct. But I guess according to Dennis Barron, now most grammarians say that it's perfectly fine. Um, But I want to ask you guys a question about this topic. Is there a line, like when referring to people as whatever they want to be referred to as, is there a line that you guys like will just not cross? Like, like as you said, Armin, if you want if you want to identify as a circle and want me to refer to you as a circle, I'll do that. But if someone says, if some, if a white guy says, hey, I want to identify as black, refer to me as black, will you uh, respect that? Or is there is there a line that you cross, that you won't cross? We're referred That's to them as... That's a spicy one. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I, I have. Like, well, I don't refer to black people as black, so I don't know what the hell yeah. that would work. <laughs> well, if you're introducing him, it's like this is my black friend. <laughs> <laughs> really white. Yeah, <laughs> I don't, <laughs> but I don't talk about my black friends as like, look, this is my black friend. <laughs> like, because like, um, I'll use my I'll, I'll use my ethnicity as a um, as an example. Like, um, you want to you want to identify as Chinese. What does that mean? I mean, like, there are subcultures within subcultures. I mean, like, I I was born in, in America, and uh, have you guys seen the film Crazy Rich Asians? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So there's a scene at the beginning of the movie when um, she's the mother is telling her daughter that you know she's Chinese, but she's unique in that she came up in America. She's what some of us would refer to as an American born Chinese in ABC. So they may have some some a ghost of their culture hanging over them. Oh like so banana. They, they, uh, isn't it called bananas? Something like that, yeah. Yeah. It's like, it, it, yeah, it's something like that. Yeah. And they um they 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 have certain aspects of Chinese culture imprinted on them, but they they have the unique experience of living of having grown up in the west now if you, it, now they're, they're 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 chinese but they're abc and i compare that with a with a, someone who just immigrated here who came from like say mainland china or taiwan and um they, they're chinese too but i imagine that because of they, they they came from two different areas 
um, they're Chinese, but Chinese from, from, from with a slightly different take on their identity, depending on their their geographical locations and the differences in culture that right. that 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 have that have come up in those areas. So, what does it mean to be Chinese? What does it mean to be black? What does it mean to be Spanish? Because that it, it's a very very it's not as clear cut in an issue that I, I think people make it be because there's so many variants. So you're just saying there's culture and there's ethnicity. If you there's Two different things: culture and ethnicity. Roughly, I, 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 I'll, I'll I'll say that for now. Yeah. 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 So I don't know if somebody says like somebody that is Caucasian and says like I identify as black, I like okay. Well, I what do you want me to do about that? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. like what? That's the next question. <laughs> like what? How? Well, like let's first on that though, because like if, if if we have someone like um. We have people adopting orphans from from China, right? And but let's say that if someone adopted someone from another ethnicity in 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 the mainland China, they were immersed in in, in Asian culture. They don't make like someone who's white who's raised in China who doesn't speak a word of English, who doesn't know a single thing about Western culture, and is raised in that environment. Like you know, would they be? Chinese in an aspect, in an aspect, they would be because they came from that kind of ethnic, well, not ethnic, well, cultural background. Right. So I can understand from that perspective that they would want to identify as Chinese. Yeah, but um, what does that mean to us? Like, I don't understand what the red line is for us. Uh, like, when 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 you when Vincent is saying what's your red line. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to be nice to people, whether they're crazy or not. And this person, like, if I mean, what red? What's the line that I'm that I'm trying to figure out? Okay, Susanna, so, <laughs> teacher, I have my hand raised. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I know we got so many people on this call. We gotta like take turns. Um, so one thing that I really struggle with is um, on it. It kind of became popular on Tumblr, the website Tumblr. There's this whole subculture. I don't know if you guys have heard about this. But it's called other kin. Do you guys know what other yes, kin yeah. are? Yeah. Yes. So it's like I identify as a non-human animal, right. usually. Um, sometimes they even push it, and they'll identify as a mythological yeah, creature. So I would say that's probably my hard line. That's yeah, really yeah. difficult for me. Like. There was someone who was like, I identify as a bunny, and my pronouns are like buns and bun self. I was like, I don't know, <laughs> man. Like, and it's it becomes very complicated. I mean, and this is like going back to my late adolescence and seeing, you know, the the dumpster fire on Tumblr. But the trans community like rags on them hardcore because they're like, you're making a mockery out of our identity like mm. non-transgender people are going to see these other kin think that we're just like other kin and they're going to make fun of us and they're going to denigrate us but most importantly they're not going to take us seriously because there are these other people who are trying to identify as something that they're not as a non-human um but i still so, don't understand what it yeah. means for the for for this to be a red line right because if does a red line mean does when you say this is a red line, does it mean that you don't believe them because, or would you refuse to r refer to them the way that you want, right? Because if you, if the red line means that you don't accept their version of uh, what they're, if you don't believe what they're saying, then yeah, I don't accept, I don't believe if somebody says uh, I identify as black even though they're Caucasian, yeah, I'm not gonna believe them. But if they say that means you should refer to me this way. I'm gonna be like, fine. I'll refer to you the way. Like, so if somebody says I identify as a bunny, I'm well. If the red line means do you accept that they're the a bunny, I'm gonna be like, no, they're human. Uh, but if the red line means, are you gonna refuse to refer refer to them as bun and bun self? I'm like, no, that's my re that's not my red line. If they wish me to refer to them as bun and bun self, I will use that because I'm not gonna. Why would I not do that? Why would I be like, no, I would, like, I will be, a, I will try to make you uncomfortable because you're insane. I mean, you are. Wait, before in Vince goes, 
Okay. Before Vince goes, I want to clarify my position. Um, your your camera is frozen, it, so ter- go go go. Oh, okay. It it's difficult oh, yeah. for me in terms of like I, I like you said I would not accept their reality, but right. I've never met someone like this in person, so I don't know how much it would affect my interpersonal relationship with them. I would right. probably try to talk to them how they want to be talked to, but I it wouldn't be easy for me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. I mean, it's not that okay. difficult, though. It's, fu- it's fun to try. It's fun to catch yourself like, oops, sorry, I mean, bun self. <laughs> it's, it's, <Yeah>. fun. <laughs> it's actually kind of funny. <laughs> like, uh, was, it's that, 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 that someone, I don't know, I, I'm not familiar with the full story behind it, and some lady who, like, on suit, some people were not wanting to massage the balls or something like that, or? I, oh, oh well, that's a whole different situation. Yeah. Wait, but Vince, what were you going to say? Yeah, so, so I have two quick things that I want to ask. One, let's push this thought experiment a bit further. Let's okay. say you're having you're you're having a lunch with uh, four friends, and one of the and one of these friends is the friend that I'm referring to, that the guy who's clearly white but says he identifies as black. And then all of a sudden, you start having a conversation about race, and he starts talking about being black, his own perspective from you know of being a black person would you combat that or just respecting his identity would you just not say anything would like oh no oh it, it's getting combated straight off the bat like you can't you can't be a white person and then complain about like yeah white <laughs> like you're just like you, you've got white privilege you dumb fuck yeah, yeah. Well, used to so be right. he's gonna be it's like gotta be alive, you, right? you people it's enslaved us <laughs> <laughs> Be like you, it, that's you, you dumbass. Like you can identify how you want, but you're you're like oh. bent, bent at that privilege. It's kind of like if if I was, I, I mean, I being being trans, like I can straight up say like, yeah, there is male privilege, and I benefit from it. But you know, so if it was like for me to go like, no, I don't have male privilege because I'm trans, and like that doesn't make any sense. Like I, I would write, I would expect people to be like, no, you're. You're you're being a dumbass right now. That's that's not right. You are getting this privilege because people perceive you to be male, whether or not because and, and most people don't know that I'm trans. So that I see that in the same way. If I was to be like, you know, start complaining about male privilege, you'd be like, dude, you fucking have it. <laughs> you know? So yeah. You know, so what what I would do if somebody says like I would I wouldn't like be too like I wouldn't be like it yelling at them or something like that i would be like well to be fair i don't i you know i don't see you as black i know you see yourself as black i just respectfully disagree with you and and i would just tell them that like is that that's not very combative is it i I would get what would get uh, like i would worry about a situation like that and and what it, it often boils down to like whenever you see stories about this is that it it really does boil down to stereotypes that you know it's it's really not okay in my book like if people start talking about black and then there's like you know it instantly goes to like rap or a certain way of talking or stuff like that that would i think i would get very uncomfortable if someone was very blatantly white and then started like doing like a chris rock type experiment like like started talking like that or something i'd be like uh I'm not comfortable with this right now, <laughs> you know. I don't, and I don't know. know it depends you know? because some people genuinely did grow up in those cultures. Right. Like yeah. I'm in the Bay Area. You like there's like so many people like this in Oakland. Like and now that there's this wave of gentrification, they get accused of being these culturally appropriative hipsters when. This is where they were born and raised. This is the culture that they were surrounded in their whole life. And just because of a change in demographic, all of a sudden they're accused of being inauthentic. And they're like, no, like I've lived this. This is me. Like, mm-hmm. And it also depends on like, because there are people who are genuinely black and that's their background that they come from and um, like the genetic line that they come from. But they you know, they don't look like it. And mm. they often get treated poorly because they don't look like how they're supposed to look. But I'm guessing in Vince's thought experiment, this is someone who is like actually white. That's why culture and ethnicity are, are separate. I don't think they should be tied together. You could have like a culture that is associated with black people, even though you're not black. 
you could and you could you know or or the other way around but i don't think like if you could adopt any culture that you want even if you don't have the skin color for it if that's what you mean by i'm black if you mean i have a black culture then yeah that's completely flexible it doesn't really matter but if you mean like biologically i have a different yeah. dna then then like yeah you're wrong i mean i i you know and but i don't i try not to hate people because they're wrong you're just wrong yeah Mm-hmm. It, it depends, though. It, it's so easy to conflate because when we refer to culture, we always use um, terms that almost always refer to ethnicity. And like if someone says Asian, I mean, well, what do you mean? You mean Japanese, Chinese, Korean, Vietnamese? When you talk about black, they're I mean, about like Indian, uh, Somali, or, um, or or whatever. When you're talking about white, are you talking about like I don't know? Like Russians Island? are white and Asian. Exactly. Yeah, and uh, it's like there's no there's no precise clear line of delineation between the uh, the, um, the multiplicity of cultures and the things we have, right. which um, you know it turns the whole race um, discussion into a into something that's very great that that people tend to approach with a with a broadsword rather than a scalpel. I remember when I was a kid, I was watching an ad on Malaysian tourism. And I got so triggered as a kid by this. I didn't even know what triggered was. But it said, Malaysia, truly Asia. And I was like, so triggered by it. I don't know why. I was like, fuck you guys. (laughs) (laughs) We're also Asia. (laughs) Like, Why does it mean truly Asia? You know how big Asia is? You don't get to own all of Asia. (laughs) I would remember being so offended by an ad for tourism to Malaysia. I don't know. (laughs) It's so uh, funny. Yeah. You remember it to this day. (laughs) Another quick question. Go ahead. The only thing I was going to add there was just like, I think there's like another aspect to it that when we're talking about stuff like this, um, I'm kind of coming more from the like trans perspective. Like for me, there's always this idea of um, like, even though it's got like, this is not the trans and trans, like it, it's not what it stands for, but there is kind of like a transition type thing. And that's that's kind of what I'm thinking about in terms of like, if someone was to identify as black as like, I think there'd be a different if they were like to identify with uh, more with a black culture. Mm. I would be like, that that's fine. Like if you, you grow up somewhere where you're, like, I mean, there's like white Jamaicans, right? So if they were they were to say, I identify more with the black culture, I'd be like, well, that kind of makes sense because you're around more black yeah. people than white people. But like when you start saying like you identify with black, I'm like, does that mean that you're going to, is there going to be like a transitional stage in this and how awkward is that going to get? <laughs> so like part of my answer is like a whole story. If someone was to say they identify as black and then I was to accept it and then they were slowly supposed to go like from talking like me to then talking like Chris Rock and then it'd be like, was the N word going to start coming up? I mean, what do I have to start worrying about here? You know, that, that that's kind of what's in my head as well. So that's part of my answer. But but there's a, the difference is that that's there's sense. nothing that makes you, that really impacts your identity separate from culture about being black, white, or Asia. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it. So if you being black or you being white or you being Asian doesn't really impact who you are as a person other than the fact that you're exposed to different cultures. So it's, it's really independent from your race. But gender, on the other hand, um, does impact your identity, right? That's why we have transgender makes sense and transracial doesn't make any sense, right? That's why we have something as gender dysphoria, but we don't have anything such as race because you know, again, your the, your ethnicity doesn't really impact your identity anyway, so it doesn't really matter other than the people you're exposed to and the places that you grew up at. Your biology really doesn't, it doesn't really make you who you are, right? It just makes that's, you look different. That's why I don't like them being, like, in any way compared, because I'm just like, they're completely separate. It yeah. really is more about culture than, and the only thing that, that, that race really should, well, not should affect, but really does affect is how you look like right. people will racially profile you based on how you look but your identity shouldn't really be like about race it just might be like your culture around you yeah and and the fact that gender does impact your identity and race doesn't other than the culture that you're exposed to actually is admitting that gender is a completely biological thing 
right? Partly. Well, I'd still say there's there's definitely a social cost. There's a, it. yeah, but it's yeah. I didn't mean like it's one hundred. Of, of course, there's some things that are influenced by society. Like for example, pink and blue is completely. Uh, yeah, but like there are many things that are biological about it. Like it's not obvious. It's not one hundred percent biological, but there are many biological things about it, or else it wouldn't have such an impact on your identity, right? The fact yeah. that you have to transition, the fact that you have, the fact that you have gender dysphoria shows that there's hormones and biology has a huge impact on your identity, right? So you, it's something not else. just, yeah. All right, Vincent, you wanted to say something? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's have another thought experiment then. I love these things, as you can tell. So um, let, someone who... I'm so glad we have thoughts. Vincent now. This is getting a lot more yeah. interesting. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. Just You're wait so until we can start drinking. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I got my Dos Equis here. Don't worry. I wish so, I had drinks, but like everything is closed. What's, wait, Armin, what's that big bottle behind you, though? It's empty. It's a wine oh, bottle. It has man. this much left in it. And it's not going to get me drunk. It's wine. Chug it. Chug it. <laughs> <laughs> so let's say someone um, who, who identifies as other kin and as um, Susanna said, wants to refer to themselves as a uh, Bun self or, or buns or whatever it was. Buns and buns. Um, I yeah, love buns and buns. It's great. And, and you do it out of <laughs> courtesy. I think we should all agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know. It, it all do it out of courtesy. Right. But then if this person asked you, do you believe me? Do you actually believe that my identity is something completely different? W would you agree that you, would you say yes, I believe you? Or I agree with you? Better. Mm -hmm. That's a better word. Does it, okay, your identity is completely different, as in you are you have a mental problem. And okay, your let's identity say the same. is different I from people. That, bunny. Uh, okay, no, you're not a bunny. I would tell them I wouldn't lie to people out of respect to them. That's not being respectful. Okay, yeah, that's I good. Say, that's... I would say that I believe that you believe you, you are a bunny. Yeah. Yes, yeah. that's, that's what I was. <laughs> but say. I don't believe you're a bunny. That's the okay. most honest response. That's the most right. honest response. Would you, Would you be uh, honest with them to tell them that you think that there's, they require mental <laughs> mental help? Like mental, they need to see, do you think that they have a problem? Would you be that honest with them? Yeah, how honest would you get? I think I, I, think I would have to be. I think it would be like, I believe you believe that, but I think that you should talk to someone about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're not Despite doing any favors. They go that yeah. far and they say they actually identify as a bunny. I mean, like, um, my, 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 um, uh, a bunny of mine... Uh, um, had knew someone who identified as being a Vulcan from Star Trek, and I'm like, what? Oh, so it's like, no, you, you if, if there's something wrong with this person, and you know, not to again, not to sound like a dick, but you know, if, if they if they want to go that far, then it, it it's, I I think it's usually a sign of that there's probably something going wrong up here, um, right. whether it's an emotional or psychological problem. That's something they probably should get checked out and um, right. Get help. I mean, there's there's people that are that are well aware that they're not like neurotypical. Like, you know, I mean, I I'm on the the autism spectrum, and like I I know people that are artistic, and it's like they know they're not these things, but they like to like it's almost like a like a, a kind of make believe kind of fantasy type thing and stuff like that. And you might kind of like go along with it, and, and that's where like D and D and stuff like that is really good for people who are artistic because it's like oh, you get to be who you want to be for a little bit and then like afterwards you're like okay now i'm back to me and it's like stuff like that if you're like okay maybe you want to talk to someone because maybe you're you're right. on the spectrum and there's 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 healthier ways of like like dealing with this I mean. if somebody gets offended if i tell them they might need they might have mental health problems if they get offended by them i, I have to explain to them that this is not an insult do you think being do you think yeah. having mental health problems is an insult like that's unfair mm. it's unfair to people with mental health problems to think that meant saying mental health problems is like saying that is an insult it's not an insult if you need help you need help right it's not an insult i i would say armin but it, i i would say that um the person who has these mental health issues may not be aware that they have mental health health issues Right. That's why I so, say you might. I'm, I, would tell them, I don't know. Go to, <laughs> that's why I wouldn't tell them that you, because I wouldn't say they have mental health problems because I'm not a mental health expert. Right. Yeah. So I, I'm going to tell them you might have mental health problems. You would only know you wouldn't know until you go check out 
with a mental health professional. I am not one. Go check with somebody that is, right? So talk to me in a couple of years. Because I've actually spoken to, to a, a lot of people who had like um who at least it, it, was, it was clear from you know my perspective that they had something that was just really wrong with them psychologically. Right. Yeah? Like you know if if every if you even brought up the idea um or hint at um hint that they should see a psychologist or um, even a counselor mm. they would get some some of these people would get really really angry and that's what, that's yeah. the problem with it's making fix, that's but it's taboo about it. yeah. yeah it's stigmatized yeah. yes fair enough yeah. yeah yeah that's a problem that's a problem that that we have stigmatized mental health problems do you think it's do you think it's insulting to refer to being um transgender as a mental health issue or is it not is it I, because yeah go ahead i did like that because I've, I've seen that a million times that people are and, and that's often an argument that's thrown back at us mm-hmm. like when there's like uh, when it's it's suggested it's like well ma- it, you are mentally ill and you're like no we're we're legitimately not it's not classed as a mental illness it's like well that you know th- there's nothing wrong with being mental illness like well yeah there isn't but the difference between a mental illness and something that is like you know like with like uh being transgender is that there's different ways to um uh to treat different problems and by assuming because they, for a long time they assumed that being transgender was a mental health issue and we treated it like it was and it didn't work but like wait, it, it what's wrong? Way, so we know it's not. So it's but not. I, it's not offensive to say it is. And I understand where you're coming from. It's like you know, if you were to to question someone's gender or identity, and then that could be seen as a, a, offensive. And it's like, no, there's. But what's wrong people... with what's wrong with saying that gender dysphoria is a mental health problem, and going through nothing. the transition is a cure? There's nothing wrong with it because that's that's the truth. That's the truth. And okay. I, yeah. Like gender dysphoria is like mental. a mental health issue, um, but that's the thing. It's like everyone always talks about like, well, that means being transgender is a mental health issue. And they're like, well, no, because I had gender dysphoria, but now you're cured. Right now, but... I don't, <laughs> you know. Right. And it's like I went through enough of a transition on a personal level where I do not face that issue. Right. So. so I'm still transgender. That's never going to change. But I don't right. have gender dysphoria. So. But you had a mental health problem before yes. you went through the transition. And I have other cool. mental health issues, so I'm still mentally ill. <laughs> in but, a sense. But, but, but one of those crazy, one right? of those has been cured. <laughs> one exactly. Of those, right. exactly. Right. Right. And the rest but, maybe one day we'll see. <laughs> but isn't it? But isn't it a good? It's a good thing to refer to gender to gender dysphoria as a mental health problem because you're admitting that it's a real thing but as long as you under, as long as you don't see the transition process as a cure right like, yeah well that's it's it basically it's it, it's it's making right. everyone talks about like it, it really does need that separation because yes gender dysphoria is is definitely a mental health condition problem. but it is is not is that it a permanent thing that you can in order to be, yeah. yeah, in order to be transgender, you have to have a mental illness. is is not true. No, no. And that's where people kind of get hung up on. It's like, well, if gender dysphoria is a mental illness, that means you're mentally ill. It's like, no, no, I, I was, it. I was, but I didn't. yeah, it's yeah. like, but some people might always have that. Might always, no matter what surgeries they get, no matter, especially like, it's it's more uh, common in trans women. Uh, but for some people, they will always have gender dysphoria. Right. There's nothing wrong with that, but it doesn't mean that being transgender is what makes right. them have a mental health issue. Got it, got it. Susanna brought a textbook, so I don't know what she she's gonna oh, best educate us. <laughs> she's like, I yes, have, nice. I was, uh, I have my clinical handbook of psychological disorders. Oof. Look at this baby, and baby. I was just, um, because I, I was actually a teaching assistant for my abnormal psychology class, um and the clinical neuroscience class. And so I just wanted to see if they had a chapter on this, but they don't in this book. So never mind. <laughs> I thought you were going to have the DSM. <laughs> like, yeah, that's what I was Dude, I know. I thought I had it, but I don't. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I know. I know. You missed a great opportunity. Okay, Vincent, next challenge. What's your <laughs> Part three. Challenge, challenge. Uh, I got I to gotta think of one as the conversation progresses. But what I was originally going to say was that 
I would view the conversation surrounding what sort of pronouns people want to use and how crazy it gets in the same way that I view religion, where even if religion were to be completely benign and it wasn't the destructive force that I perceive it to be, I'd still be against it because I think it's wrong and I'd be vocal about it. So I'd probably be not so vocal because I'd be a bit concerned about coming off as a douchebag with the whole pronoun uh, issue. But um, but in the same way that I view religion, I view the pronoun situation, I guess. I got to think of other thought experiments. Oh, so Wait, the example would read... be... Hmm? Oh, uh, to Vince, do you read that thing I sent you from Radical Partners about, like, why you should include pronouns in your um, email signature? Yeah, I um, I was reading it. And yeah, I mean, it makes sense. And I think that's probably the main reason. Oh, just for a quick, I guess, synopsis of what happened is that one of the questions that I asked um, Susanna was... Um, what was the specific question? Oh, yeah, like, um, the whole non Basically, like, like, why does it matter so much? <laughs> yeah. Effectively. And she gave me, like, a, um, it, it was it from a university or, like, a blog post or something? No. So it was from some random site I found called Radical Partners that seems to be some sort of, like, radically inclusive business consulting firm or something. Uh -huh. It was kind of weird. And, yeah. Yeah. So, so my original question, I remember now, was that why do people associate pronouns with gender or societal expectations based on how you were born rather than just sex as a clear, easy descriptor? Because only, what, 0.05% of people identify as intersex? So it's just an easy, like an easier descriptor. It's more pragmatic. So I was asking that sort of question. And, you know, I was a bit confused by why there are even non-binary people, they, them. And so she sent me that, that article and I was reading it. And um basically it, it for the most part it's this is the hard part you know brett weinstein talks about how there's a imposter problem on the left where people on the left seem to do different things the same thing for different reasons where some people have pronouns in their bios to be in solidarity with the trans community and others in solidarity with people who identify with some of the other 72 genders and so it seems like the problem is much bigger than it is when in reality it's just different people reaching the same conclusions through different met through different reasonings and so that's why i was confused um about the whole situation and yeah so susanna sent me a great article and much of it is basically just being in solidarity, depending on who you're trying to support. And Peter Bogosian actually tweeted out something. He got ratioed like a few days ago for, for a tweet that he did where he, he basically tried to make the argument that people who have pronouns in their bios are not doing it because they're in solidarity. It's They're doing it to virtue signal, signal a worldview, a political worldview. I think it's a bit of a disingenuous take. I think it's I think it is mainly in solidarity. That's not to say that you know, virtue signaling isn't a real thing. It certainly is. And Jeffrey Miller documented this before the right sort of just took it as one of their arguments. Um, so I think mainly it's in solidarity. I don't know. What do you guys think? I mean, I, I think I he's know. right and he's wrong because like, I, like with the subject of virtue signaling, I don't, it, 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 I'm a little torn on this because the, you want to, you want to show solidarity with people who you think are, marginalized bullied or oppressed right but you but you also don't want to virtue signal to the point where like you want to say stand with a stand with someone simply based on the virtue of the idea that they've been oppressed in the past and therefore that experience of depression is necessarily applying to whatever it is they're going through right now because it doesn't always apply i mean as we've seen from what culture the whole narrative of Question is used as a hammer to just sweep aside any any kind of minute criticism that comes along our way. So you know, with, with in regards to what Dr. Bogosian was talking about, I mean, like, is there something wrong? I guess with putting the pronouns in the Bible to stand in solidarity with a group, probably not. But what is your intent in doing? And how willing are you as an individual to see um, the nuance in a specific situation which may or may not have to do with what with your with your sense of identity i think i i think whatever whatever the intentions are it has backfired massively from in the pr department i think like 
transgender people are discriminated against so massively and this whole focus on pronouns has made people lose focus on what really matters. And I think that if pronouns are important, you could just, if people make wrong assumptions, just correct them right then and there and they will use the right ones. You don't have to be so obsessed over people not to get it right right from the beginning okay it doesn't matter it's not a huge thing if they don't get it right from the beginning if they make a mistake you don't have to like make it people that are like 99 people percent of the people in the world if they look male they're probably using he him if they look female they're probably using she her you could just assume that they're using those and if you happen to be wrong they will just tell you and you fix it all of these people that are 99 percent of the people that are keep using he him and she her to just be in solidarity with the trans or non-binary people, I think they should have. They could have done a lot more if they posted more or talked more about the abuse that they're getting, um, the discrimination that is against them in many places in the world. You know, so many of them are dying. People looking down on them, treating them poorly, treating them, you know, with disgust. Um, I think all of that deserves more attention. I'm not saying. You know, it, I'm not saying pronouns don't matter at all. If 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 people using the wrong pronoun against you and you feel like uncomfortable, you feel like people are not recognizing who you are, and it feel it feels makes you feel less like you. Just you know, that's not a good thing. But if they make the wrong assumption, just tell them this is not. I, we have seen that a lot of people have lost. Uh, the results has not been good. Like we've seen the results have not been good. Like the transgender movement was supposed to be the next thing after the gay rights movement have made so much success. Again, I'm not saying the gay rights movement is over. There's so much shit happening that still needs to be addressed. But they did make a lot of progress. But the transgender community was the next one that we should have been highlighting and should have gotten a lot of attention. And the fact that they're lower in number doesn't mean that they deserve less attention. They need they even need more attention. Gay rights, the gay rights didn't uh, become so important. You know, didn't make all the progress just because of what gay people did. They did have a lot of support and help from straight people. And because trans people are even in a lower percentage of the population. They are not going to be able to do this by themselves. They do require the help of the rest of the population. And some of that requires good PR and telling people that, you know, I'm not going to assume you're he, him, he, or you have to use my these pronouns. And that's not going to get you the right. That's not going to get people on board with your movement. OK, it hasn't. So it's failing. And I think you need to switch your strategy. That's, that's that's kind of I really wish. Yeah, that, that whole juicy thing with that, yeah. Yeah, that's the most pernicious thing about this whole, this, about this whole quote unquote social justice warrior movement because I don't think what these fools are realize they're doing is that they're the boy crying wolf. Um, the social justice warriors, the way they keep the way the the the, the, the level of wokeness that they bring to the dialogue right now, in the long run, they're gonna they're gonna ar arm genuine social justice issues because if, if you're if you're batch crazy to this extent for a long period of time to which people, no one was gonna take the, to, to an extent where no one takes you seriously anymore. But what happens when you have genuine social issues, social justice issues? What, what happens when you see genuine cases of um, racism, misogyny, what have you? Well, the, um, these these SJW just fucked it up for everyone else. Yeah. So, I mean, th to be fair though, they don't represent most of the people um, on the liberal or left or whatever you want to call it side. They, they're just so loud and they have been used by the people on the other side. Like, it's just so much fun to highlight them because they sound crazy, <laughs> right? And, 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 and they just make the, the, the whole liberal movement, all the, everything that has been, it has achieved a lot, right? And people are just dismissing all the great achievements of the liberal movement and they're just focusing on these uh, and these and like and I think like it's unfair. It's unfair. Like I, I it's I think like we have we should criticize our side, the anti SJW side as well. I think the anti SJW side is not highlighting the fact that there was a point to be you know the the, the these movement that these fringe groups are hijacking. 
they, we have to highlight what they have achieved so far, right? Like the women rights movement was a big thing. Mm-hmm. It, it's still a big thing. The gay rights movement is a big thing. Like they have made so much progress and so much focus on these fringe groups to make them seem like they represent the left or the rebel movement. And I know those things, those two things are not the same. I know, I know. But making it seem like that is something that the anti-SJW side is responsible for, right? So I think the anti-SJW side are also need to be more responsible and showing, telling people like, okay, fine, we're going to make fun of these people. But please also look at all the good that the uh, uh, that this this side has achieved and continue to achieve, right? Yeah. What's crazy is that they don't even represent. Oh, go 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 ahead. I think one of the things though that like going back to the whole like gay rights movement thing is that one of the things that really disappoints me is that throughout all that gay rights movements they've had transgender people like fighting for them, and now we're getting to a point where a lot of like gay and lesbian individuals are are actually like vocally turning their back on the transgender community and i think more i think i would rather rather than people going into like their profiles and be like she her him he all that stuff i would rather people like would would use that would instead be like if you're gay and you're turning your back on your transgender community you're an a- you're an asshole. Like you know, it's like I would prefer more more highlight to be on like the fact that a lot of people are now like they've kind of got their I got mine, fuck everyone else type thing, and I, I, that that's one of the things that I've found the most concerning as more and more countries are 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 getting like uh, marriage equality. I feel like more and more are turning their back on the trans community or intersex or asexual, all that like community. There just it just feels like I've got mine fuck everyone else you know, yeah so. but i okay i might disagree with you a little bit i think most people don't get to be activists on too many things right like I, if by turning your back mean they're actively working against it then i agree with you but if by turning oh, there's your a back lot. There's a lot. okay yeah. there's so then a I, that's lot what i'm talking about yeah. on the trans community. okay then there's I a lot of like lgb communities now and they're like they're actively like removing the t like that okay. kind of stuff Okay, so I agree with you there, but I don't expect oh, everybody yeah. to like pick up every movement, you know, under the sun and fight for all of them. But I agree with you. If I actually, like, for example, a lot of athe- a lot of people that are saying, um, no, you know, why are you not fighting for, like, for example, fem- they say feminists that are focusing on Western issues, they're like, oh, why are you not fighting for women in the Middle East? I would like. I mean, if you want to play that game, then they have to, like, there's not, I could, you, that's a never, like, I could go, keep going on until there's not a, uh, every, uh, name every single movement that you have to support. As long as you're not being a hypocrite and shitting on the feminists that are fighting for women rights in the Middle East, you're okay to focus on whatever you want, right? You could yeah, that, that's why it's like, that's why it's like vocally against. Like, you vocally against. That's what I mean, like, the LGB groups are, like, they are, they're using their minority status. Right. to try and like justify that it's okay to be against transgender people because hey look we're we're in that community and we actively say no to them like right. that's the, that's the stuff that i'm seeing a lot more of and i'm also well aware that that it's like a vocal minority mm-hmm. but it's like something i wish i would i would like while, while we're talking about like the whole like social justice warrior and virtual signaling like yeah i would rather if we use that at, like if we shifted that just be like rather than all this she heard like I don't, we don't need to know that. I think just if you were to actively like, if you want to, if you want to genuinely help, mm. then like genuinely help and like call out mm. like when things are, yeah, like call out more of like the the hypocrisy that's going on and like. Right. I would rather See, that than like random stuff that doesn't mean, mean anything. Yeah. Vincent See, wanted to say something. Oh, go, Mars. That's really pisses me off when when you see some of these. When you see people use their minority status to bully a minority within the minority, that the um, did, did any of you see that that interview that Ilan Omar did with um, um, I, I think she was she would ask us female female genital mutilation. Oh wow, and, I, I didn't. And, and, yeah, and um, it, it, she just went, oh, you know what? That, it, it's she said something along the lines of it's insulting as a Muslim woman to be asked that question um repeatedly or, or something like that I, I don't quote me on that but 
the person who was asked the question was was another Muslim woman. Oh who, yeah, I saw that. Who's, who's Annie Zonabel? She runs Muslims for Progressive Values, and supposedly this is a mosque in which they don't have gender segregation. They have uh, gay moms and whatnot, and like it, it, Ilan just used her um, st- uh, status as a minority to bully a minority within her minority. And I was like, what the fuck? Okay, I might I might def- I might wait, wait, defend wait. Elon here. Go on, sorry, Susan. Vince, didn't you talk about this exact instance with Gasman on your podcast? Uh, Mars did. Yeah, we were talking about that, right? I can't tell you guys different because you both look this. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, do we really? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, but um, but wait, wasn't Elon saying that I already responded to this? Like, why are you guys assuming I have defend this just because I'm a Muslim? I think that's a fair yeah. response. I think I'm going to defend Elon on this. Because here's the thing. I Like, when Elon, when I watched that video, people, like, somebody asked him about FGM, and she's like, it's appalling that you're asking me. And people are like, oh, you think it's appalling? Like, aren't you, shouldn't you be against FGM? But I kind of, like, understood what she was saying, because I've been in a situation where I've explained something, like, a million goddamn times, and people are asking me again, oh, like, you know, you didn't even do your research and you just assume that, like, I am, she already had mentioned that she's against FGM, right? And people are, are wanting to hold her responsible, holding her feet to a fire for FGM just because she has a job. And she's like, she already clarified this. Like, why do you think I have, to, I like, why do you think I have to defend this because I'm a Muslim? Uh, where I already had cl- clearly responded, like, what what's next? So, like, imagine if you ask her like, next time, like, do you defend Al-Qaeda? I should like, no, I don't. I'm against terrorism. And then next time, like, as a Muslim, what are your views on Al-Qaeda? I should like, I'm against Al-Qaeda. And then next time, again, you're like, because you have a job, I want to know your views on Al-Qaeda. I'm going to be like, shut the fuck up. I or like, go, you know, like, I, I, I kind of see her point and, and I don't know, maybe I'm reading it wrong. What you... you know, where I object to is like Annie Zumbabel, she, she also, she also is a Muslim. And like, um, Sarah Hyder made the point on, uh, on Twitter that like, you know, as a politician, you're going to be repeatedly asked these questions. And I, mm. just my, just from my perspective, Ilan just used her position. Um, just, she was a bully. Okay, okay. Was- Mars, was- what do you think? What do you think if I ask you this? Okay, yeah. as as a Chinese person, how do you feel about eating bat soup and spreading coronavirus and be and that being responsible for uh, a pandemic? global pandemic you know you would be like you could be like and you say like ah oh, why are you asking me that i'm like isn't it so easy to be against something such so obvious like why can't you just say to me why can't you just tell me like that's not a good idea like you know what i mean like well just tell me that this is a but, but uh, you're against it like is that so hard to do like things so, like you know one yeah absolutely i would say i'm against it but right one one clear difference though is that I'm you know I'm I'm a nobody. No one knows who I am. I don't have any political power. I don't have any right. kind of influence. Ilan Omar does. She has a, she is in a position where she has a, a certain level of influence where she can uh, either push or harm a, a a certain political agenda because of the influence she possesses. I'm not in that position. And right. you know, yeah, yeah, that's so, fair. But but I understand the frustration. Like as people as atheists, for example. We every time somebody says, "But Stalin killed so many people," you like you can't like you like roll your eyes sometimes, and get, you have to respond every time. But I can understand that why people get frustrated. I mean, the answer is or is okay. So yeah, you're a politician. You have to answer every time. But but it's just right there. The answer is already available. Like you could just do two minutes, like half a minute research she already answered it like you're a, okay so yeah she's a politician she's supposed to answer but the person that is asking that question is she was a journalist she should like probably do some research before she comes up with some questions uh, go, you know to a politician as well shouldn't she like isn't that her job to know that she already answered that question possibly but um i i would say to that that um you know i i think as a political figure and as a leader 
you have a certain kind of responsibility to use your your speech responsibly. I mean, if you looked at like what, what Trump was tweeting a few, I'm not gonna. I'll just mention this part. Like a few weeks ago, he was talking this stuff about liberty, liberate Florida, liberate these states, or whatnot, which was just that was. You could argue that he was just using that to incite people. And since most people don't tend to, and I'll fall, I don't think most people anyway tend to follow politics on a very consistent basis. Mm. You can you can make the argument that Omar was using her position to, you know, she was using this this politicized event to to to, to just bully someone else and to sweep aside genuine genuine criticisms. Right. And you know, but why would it be genuine she criticism to her? Answering... Like she doesn't do gen- like why is that the genuine criticism? She doesn't she has never done FGM to anybody. Like why is she being put on the spot for that? Just because she's Muslim. Yeah, but it's a but it's a problem with 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 within within within, within Muslim religious societies and like the, 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 the yeah, but she's not responsible for Muslim all Muslims stuff. just because she's a Muslim. Well, of course not. But like you know, the if she has a certain a, a, a level of influence that allows her to, to you know to push the societies for the she better, doesn't have she, influence on Muslims that are doing FGM. She's an American politician. They're not. There's no people, Muslims in America are not doing FGM. She. It happens. Every, yeah, they are. Yeah, but okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they are. yeah, there's exceptions for everything, but it's not like a, it's not like something. And when you say level of influence, she doesn't have influence in places where this is a major problem. Well, could I could I like put in like a chip in here? If I was on the political spectrum, and every single time. I went up and someone was to ask me about like hormone blockers for kids. I would actually love that question because I would love to be able to to set it straight every single time. And even if I'd set it straight like 50 times, I'm like, I don't know how many people have read those articles, but they might read this one. Mm. And I'd be like, yeah, there's no problem with it. I'll set out what the pro- what what the arguments like actually are. But- I would welcome that question because I could put it straight every time. But, but Jack, you also have made it clear that you like it because you're a trans rights activist, not, but you think it's unfair to ask somebody just because they're trans, right? Well, yes, but if so, I was on a political spectrum, then I would actually argue that if someone was trans and was politically running and didn't like those questions, it'd be like, yeah, you but, should not be running for politics then. Because everything that is a part of your identity... So it's not because be she's Muslim, though. Your, she's because she's politics. a politician. Okay, but then you're saying yeah. it's because she's a politician, not because she's Muslim. So why are they not asking the same question regarding FGM to other politicians? Because it's not a, a main concern with who they are. The same way that I wouldn't expect that people who don't know about transgender issues wouldn't be asked about hormone blockers for kids. Or if but they from are, her, right. from her, her view... I get it right. But from her perspective, FGM is not part of who she is, so she doesn't understand why this she's, this is she's, why this is being tied to her. But she is she is a Muslim politician. Right. Okay, it's hard. To, it's kind of just being like you know, if you're asked questions about being a woman and you're a woman, it's like. So would it, a, be fair fair to ask, it's would it be right? fair to ask? Would it be fair to ask? Okay. Fair. Hmm. Well, for so me, like, if we had like a like you know if if, if Pete Buttigieg, for example, was let's just say that um, if Pete Buttigieg somehow in the future got elected to the presidency, you know he he would be effectively and, and we'll we'll assume that he's our first openly gay president. Mm. He would probably be propositioned by um, several. Uh, he would probably lobby by many people to push for. Issues, um, especially re- re- regarding gay rights, simply because he comes mm-hmm. from simply because that he, he's gay. Okay, and, so um, he has a, a, a political position. I'm not yes. saying it's unfair to ask the question. I'm saying like it's just weird that you're asking the same question a billion times. Okay, for example, like when they when if you look at the um, press briefings that Trump has over the co- coronavirus, if you look at the reporters in the room, right? They they keep asking him a lot of questions, but they're not asking the same questions. A lot of times, sometimes even they're asking the same questions, even if they are referring to a question they asked before, they're asking for a clarification of something that Trump said in response to a previous question. So they, like, if you look at all the reporters in the room, they have 
studied every single answer that Trump has given before. I'm like, okay, so la- last time you said this. Can you clarify what you meant when you said this? It seemed like some people have understood it, that you're say- saying this. Did you mean this? And Trump just gives a nonsense answer after. But every, almost every single reporter in that room seems to have listened to the previous answer that Trump had given before, and now they're asking a follow-up question, right? So I just think, like, I mean, yeah, as a politician, you have to be worried. Maybe Elon should have done better. She should have realized that this is going to be taken out, and people were like, oh, she ref- look, she's offended by a question, and they're not going to take all the other videos that she had answered it and she should have been more politically savvy to realize that this is going to be used like this and she should have just answered it uh, maybe she could have answered it and then also say like hey you what like aren't you what haven't you listened to me answering this before go do your job properly that would have been a more clever thing to do right but That'd at the same fair. yeah um, but at the same time I understand the frustration that she had okay she wasn't being politically savvy but I understand the frustration. Let's try to steel man the interviewer as best as possible here. So let's pretend that she's in the <laughs> pretend. Yeah. Let's pretend she's in the conversation here, and she says, "Well, what I was trying to do, really, and the reason why I asked her, obviously, she, because she's a Muslim, and because she's a Muslim, a powerful Muslim politician, she represents the Islamic community, and by denouncing fem- female genital mutilation, it could shift public perception towards FGM in a negative light, and maybe eventually that could... But she had denounced it before. No, that's the thing. But as a politician, it's an expectation that you're going to be asked the same question over and over again. So you can make the argument that you understand her frustration, but at the same time, you would also have to criticize her for not acting like a politician, even though she is a politician. And you can also view the situation in a Kantian view. Well, what were the effects of what she did? The fact of the matter is that you could view, you could genuinely make an argument that because she said what she said, it made matters worse for the FGM, for what's going on in FGM. I, it's fair to say it's, it wasn't politically savvy. But I also think the reporter also wasn't doing a good job because if the reporter knew that she already answered that, she could have been like, I know you have addressed this before, uh, but for, more, for for the sake of more people knowing this, can you answer it one more time? Maybe something like that. I okay, think both, so if, if, they, if the interviewer said that, you think it would have been uh, perfectly have been fine? Better. Yeah, yeah. If the reporter said... I, <laughs> All parties involved could have done their job better. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what we're getting. <laughs> yeah. I do think that Elon is getting targeted unfairly for so many things. Even though I don't, I do, do disagree with her on many things. I think a lot of people, like for example, being against Israel's influence on United States politics, people like. I, you know, I know there are a lot of people that this they're influenced by their anti-Semitic views to focus on Israel, because, you know, but to be fair to Elon, she was also against Saudi Arabia's influence on U.S. politics, right? So nobody highlights the fact that she was also doing that, you know, with Saudi Arabia. It wasn't just Israel. Mm-hmm. So, it, you know, I don't know. So I just think like her putting a hijab, you know, I'm against hijab, okay? And I'm going to, if somebody is for her job, I'm going to be like telling them, this is why I'm against your job. This is why I think this is a symbol of oppression and I don't agree with it. And I think it's wrong that you're highly, you know, that you're promoting it. But I'm not going to be, I, I, I think it's unfair to just be like, you have to represent all the shitty things that the world of Islam is responsible for and stand here and defend it and be held responsible for it. Because of you have that thing on your head, right? Um, I think that's an un- that's unfair. That's taking it too far. You know, just like atheists, like they, they do that with us too. We're like they they like defend other atheists because you're an atheist. So like I'm not them. <laughs> like I'm like like you know I'm not like I'm not gonna defend other atheists. Okay. I don't. I defend what I. I'll defend what I do, and sometimes I don't even do that. Sometimes, like, yeah, no, that was a shitty thing that I did, it, right? Have people, so have people said that, like, defend Lawrence Krauss for sexual misconduct because you're an atheist too. Actually, you... yes, that, really? that, exactly that. <laughs> but first of all, I don't know if Lawrence. Okay, so that's a good example. But other example, there are many other examples, right? Like your people did this. Oh, look. Atheists, like Armin, look what atheists are doing. Uh, like, well, fuck them. I don't care. Like, I don't know why you think I'm supposed to. Like, so, why do you think? <laughs> you know, 
godless communism. Yeah. The, yeah are you one of those people? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I see what you're like, saying. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people are like, oh, these people, atheists, look at they're promoting atheists. Have you seen, have you seen how many atrocities atheists are responsible for in history? And like, fuck them. What do you want me to say? Like, fuck all those atheists that did this. Like, why do you think I'm going to defend them? Why do you feel like, why do I, why do I have to be responsible for the actions of other atheists? And I, I'm being consistent. Muslims are not responsible for the crimes of other Muslims, and you shouldn't be, you shouldn't, you shouldn't try to hold them accountable, right? Um, they are responsible for being wrong, and you could call them out on that on their religion. That's fine, but they're not responsible for the crimes of their fellow Muslims, and it's you know. Yes. Anyway, Susanna is uh, Susanna's camera frozen. Susanna's <laughs> camera frozen. <laughs> it's frozen as a perfect. <laughs> yeah. It's, okay, it's perfect. Back. It was, oh, perfect, it was a perfect freeze. It was so perfect. Yeah. Wait, what happened? You were like... <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll, I'll send you the picture right now. Oh, <laughs> no! Just <laughs> pictures! Oh, it's in the, oh, it's in the chat. Oh, that's really cute, actually. <laughs> Yeah. So your profile pace is on. Oh, look at that smile. You can tell I'm having a good time when my third dimple comes out. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Susanna, you took you you have an Atheist Republic shirt. Did you submit it as a fan sign? I haven't yet. Okay, no. do that, do that, do that. Or just send it send it to me. I'll add it to the Edgar uh, to our collection to our Facebook. I'm thinking about yeah, I also wait. Say that, Vince. I didn't hear you. Uh, I'm thinking about getting the hoodie because the logo is pretty cool with just like the A and the two lines on the left and right. I'm oh, thinking yeah. about getting that hoodie. It's pretty rad. Yeah. I, we provided oh, yeah. the option without the Atheist Repu without writing Atheist Republic for people that want to support without actually saying that they're atheists. So we supported it like so that it could be stealth. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so yeah. cute. Yeah. Wait, they all they also have a gay Kaaba sweatshirt available. Oh, oh yeah. That... Rainbow Kaaba. <laughs> That's a really good one. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to start promoting that one. I just yeah. realized Mark's book I, I... Isn't, isn't back right there. Huh? So in Susanna, she she oh, has yeah. why there's not back right there. Oh, uh, yeah, that's good. That's your book on my book stand. <laughs> The picture of you kissing the Quran in the back is the cutest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> because, no, I love it because the suitcases are so big <laughs> compared to your body. The, the briefcases are like half the size of you guys. Like, what? <laughs> uh, it's adorable. Yeah. Yeah, it's so cute. <laughs> Okay. Question, what are we going to call Armin's monologues? Oh, we're that's right. We have to come up with a name for the monologues. I like our monologue. I was going to say that. Yeah, I think that's good. Fine. I, if, every time I use it, I'm going to say people that I, I didn't pick that. I'm not so self centered. It was picked by. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a dictatorship, it's a republic. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to clarify because it just seems like wow, Armin loves himself a little bit too much. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. All right. So this was wow, an hour and twenty minutes. That flew by. Oh wow. Yeah. That's got to be the longest. <laughs> we have to come up with the, what to do when these chats become bigger because then everybody's going to talk over each other. I was thinking that if we become big, like if more people start joining at some point. We could do one with one dollar patrons, and then one with the five dollar patrons, and then one with the ten dollar patrons, something like that. I don't know. Then yeah, if I, you got I have a name that you can call this, you can call this chat on me. What? Call this the, the new Sahaba. <laughs> <laughs> the companion. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> that is gonna yeah. offend a whole bunch of people. That's awesome. <laughs> 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 no, that's not gonna do that. Okay. The companions. Yeah. In New Sahaba. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna do that actually. Okay. Oh, it's so okay. good. All right, guys. Um, well, let me just stop recording, but don't go anywhere.